Okay guys, so let's finally turn on the Apple Lisa. I've been meaning to do this for a long time, but I just haven't had the the, power, the cables that worked right. Because a while ago I tried turning it on, because I was expecting that it would be able to boot from the internal hard drive, but evidently it only boots from the external hard drive. So I had to go and get a parallel cable. So now we'll try that. I have never turned on the external hard drive, so we'll see if that blows up. So first off, we have to turn on the external hard drive. Let's see if this burns up. That's probably not good. That light should flicker. I've actually never removed this hard drive from the phone. Ugh. This is the rubber pads on the bottom that have deteriorated and turned into like some nasty rubbery goo. Oh, look at that. That's nasty. It's weird how these feet only half dissolve, like that one. It's like it has a gooey center. I've been already tackling the yellowed plastic because, as you can see with the mouse, I've been yellowing, or I've, I've been whitening the top piece with hydrogen peroxide. Got this big tub and got a bunch of hydrogen peroxide, and that's what I'm doing with that. But I'm not f for sure how I'm going to tackle the nasty rubber stuff, because, ugh. It's now the next day, and I picked up some paper towels and some isopropyl alcohol, because I've heard that this helps a lot with cleaning up liquefied and sticky rubber. So, let's give that a try and see if we can get rid of this old nasty rubber stuff on here. Oh, that seems to be helping a lot. It's coming off a little easier than expected though, so that's nice. Oh, guys, look at that. Isn't that awesome? It came off so easily. Oops. <laughs> I keep spraying this stuff on the ground, but hey, at least it's as propyl alcohol. It'll evaporate very quickly. Okay, I'm very happy with this. That isopropyl alcohol works very well. It's not even slightly sticky, it's just, just plastic. Now this thing, I have to be very careful with it because I want to keep all the information on there if it still works. But let's carefully take it apart and see if, if we can fix anything. I don't know though. But yeah, let's just open it up and see what's inside first. Yeah. I'll definitely be giving that part of another clean with some isopropyl alcohol.
Okay, so this thing's pretty cool. The hard drive's quite big too, and it's a Seagate. Aha! Seagate! Oh, well, it's... I think that me and this hard drive are meant to cross paths now. It's a Seagate model ST506. I believe that's a 10 megabyte? Can't remember for sure. What's the sound? Oh! It's the screw falling down. I was afraid there was uh, something bad happening. There we go. And I can clean that a little better too, because there's still some of that sticky stuff on there. Hmm. And there we go. We have the main control unit. And we have the Seagate hard drive itself. This is nice that it comes down into like a small modular system to where as long as I get this to work I can always replace the hard drive with another hard drive from the era and if this doesn't work well then I have a hard drive. Now my first concern of why this hard drive isn't turning on is the power supply. See under here we have the main like power supply box that unit right there and the only cables we have coming out of it are these two this Molex connector that is probably I actually know it has four four connectors or five connectors instead of four. So this is never mind, it's probably not like the same connectors on a like a, an older style computer like PCI and stuff like that. Then we have the two power cables, maybe twelve volts, maybe five volts, not really sure, going to the Seagate hard drive. Oh hey, look at that. AMD. It's always interesting to find AMD chips and old stuff like this. I don't think I've ever seen an entirely blue microchip before. That is just so cool. I love that. I want to have just a board with a hundred of those on them, just hanging on the wall or something like that. That'd be so cool. Okay, so let's check the voltage. Now this is the power cable that would be going to the power, uh, the hard drive. That's not good at all. That, that's pretty much no power going to the hard drive. Ten volts. So yeah, pretty much this power supply is shot. Probably some bad capacitors, and this is pretty good because if that's the only issue, I can probably fix this. So here's the insides of the power supply. It's very simple, very easily accessible, so I'm glad about that. But a lot of capacitors, and especially ones that have a tendency of leaking and exploding, like these ones, these ones right here, these filter capacitors. There's five of them, and those have a almost surefire tendency of exploding over 30 years of use. That's a very good reason for a lot of Macintoshes dying, like the original Macintosh 128K and stuff like that. I think uh, Commodores had them too, like the Commodore 64. I'm probably going to rip those out and replace those with like more solid state ones or ones that don't have like an electrolyte in them or something like that. And then I'll probably replace a lot of these capacitors and see what's the matter with them. Fuse is fine, so that's good. If the fuse is blown, that would mean that something bad happened and I had to look for like a short circuited piece, but it looks like it's going to be a really easy fix. I think that's pretty much it for now gonna wait until I get some more capacitors and other components to replace on that board. I'm also gonna probe it and stuff like that and just kind of figure out what's wrong with it and then we can make an entire video where where I fix it. I'm pretty happy about just well I'm happy about the Lisa just in general that I got it but it was free <laughs> but also that it had this old hard drive in it that's pretty cool. Oh and let's not forget that it even has that internal drive in there that uh Twiggy, I think it's called. Can't remember for, sh for sure. Oh, it's a widget drive. Never mind. Tw uh, oh, e oh yeah, Twiggy was the name for the old floppy drives for the original uh, for the first Lisa, but for the Lisa two, it was the widget hard drives. Yeah, that's what it was. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. See ya.